so hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog this week you join me on an afternoon session where we're going to be fishing with bread and floating crust having a bit of a roving session fishing for carp well on the belmont estate and for anyone who's been following the blogs on here you've got a couple of pools you've got willow rowan yew tree and then there's oak pool around the back the two bigger pools are the specimen pools which we won't be going on today there's quite a few cars in the car park i've left it till about three o'clock in the afternoon to even go out fishing today with my fishing it's all about getting out and getting a bite the rivers at the moment are just a waste of time they're all low and clear really low and if you're going to target the rivers my best advice would be to go first thing in the morning for an hour or two and try and do the best you can but the other option is carp the carp will be up on the top in this weather and we've got a couple of hours stick the gopro on our heads and just see if mooching around we can pick up one or two carp now one or two who've been following the blog regular will know that there's something missing on willow pool the actual willow fell in a few days ago what we're going to do now we're going to get the gear out of the car we're going to have a mooch around have a look see what we can see as i say space is going to be limited because there is a few cars in the car park but we're not going to catch them in the car park so let's get the gear and let's get mooching So just coming onto the pool, the first thing I'm going to do is put on my Polaroids and just look. I'll know pretty quickly what mood the fish are in. I want to see where they are in the water and whether or not it's going to be one where I'm going to have to create an opportunity by introducing lots of bread or one where I can just flick a piece of bread out and nab one. Now, looking at the pool, you can see in this corner here, all the scum that's collected from that tree being cut down now you imagine how much food has come off that tree you can see there the carp's just moved so i would imagine that this is a very good place to start there'll be loads of food come off that willow when they've cut it down so this is where i'm going to start and just look it is very hot it might be till later on that we get the first opportunity you can see there's quite a few people on the tree which has got the bigger carp in but you can see there is quite a lot of space mr swan coming down to the pool is not good news but just looking you can see one just down the edge down there so there is one or two in this area so i'm going to set the rod up i'm just going to try with one piece of bread just to try and fill one. So on this pill we've had one or two half chances. We had one chance down here which was a half chance we had that one turn away over there which for this time of day so early on is good you know they're coming up for it they're trying to eat it the fact that both the swans are on this pool i'm going to take advantage of and i'm going to go and try another pool and come back to this one later on there we go the first one of the day just creeping along this bank and you can see along this bank there's a couple of carp just lying up we managed to get the first one of the day it's a little the biggest in this pool it is only a small pool 
so it does make locating them quite easy and because you can get right round the outside you can literally just drop a piece of bread on the carp's noses there we go there's a quick look at him on the mat nicely wet and we'll let him straight go we won't give him out too long and we'll let him go You can see there that one was right in the edge and the sunbathing and <laughs> he was sucking in the grass. I dropped it on the grass, it got stuck on a piece of grass and then <laughs> next minute he's sucking at the bits of bread I think that had come off when I tried to reposition it and as soon as I knew that hadn't spooked him then I knew his goose was pretty much cooked because he was looking for my piece of bread then it was just a case of getting it on top of his head and when they're like that you can literally drop it on the head and make a splash they'll literally not spook and for this pool where they go up to about five pound this does look like a slightly a better one for this small pool definitely a good fish if not the biggest in the pool probably he's a lovely fish he stood out when i seen him in the edge and he couldn't resist that piece of bread placed on his nose. As I say, it's a warm day today, not keeping out too long. Let's get him straight back. So it's rather symbolic that the first fish comes standing on the stump of the willow. <laughs> Just had to be the way, didn't it, on this pool. We went round a few other pools and the swans seem to follow me. It's been hard work. The sun's going to be a nightmare filming this, I think, but... Yeah. Stood on the stump of the willow, catching a fish on floating crust. And with the remains of the willow stump behind me, great to get a fish. It's been hard today and we'll probably have to come back another evening to finish this vlog off. But we'll call this one maybe the last one of this little piece. Let's get it straight back. So maybe just one more cast a beautifully marked carp the missus is on the phone saying tea's done so call this session to an end here and i'll catch us all on another one of my evening sessions so it's the next day uh, i've left it till about one o'clock in the afternoon and just come for a mooch up you can see today it's a lot quieter so hopefully today we'll have a bit more freedom on the pools um Definitely going to go and give that pool on the very top a bit more of a go today. But we're just going to start off on this pool here on Willow. There's a few carp on top. They don't look like they're feeding. But you never know until you put a bait in front of them. There's a few in this area. So let's have a go. But the good news is there is some carp moving. The fact that they're moving makes them catchable you can see that one there isn't moving at all he's just lying bathing very hard to catch you gotta put a bait past him and then hope the line doesn't spook him as you bring it back 
which is very hard. But certainly around that log area where we had a few the other day, there's definitely some around there. So with this type of fishing, there's no point wasting time. And there we go. And say it's just moving from that spot over there to this spot here. Just a bigger density of carp, a lot more of them. And the more carp there is, the more chance that they're gonna go past that piece of bread. And when they're moving around in quite a big shoal, you get that competition when they're coming for it. You could see there, I don't know if it was on the GoPro, that four of them went underneath the piece of bread. And that's when, you know, the competition comes in. They don't want the one behind it to get it. And there we go. There's gonna be a lot of lads out fishing today behind quiet bite alarms. When it's like this, this is definitely the thing to do. The size of fish becomes irrelevant and just getting a bite. We won't keep him out too long and we'll get him straight back. So I don't know whether the GoPro has just picked it up but a bit of bread there and the carp just come past and completely ignored it. What I've brought with me today is a mixture of Cheshire particle hemp, there's some Hinders pellets in there, there's some of the spicy sausage pellets from Sonia Bates that I had in the cupboard and just a few flecks of corn. I'm not going to put loads in, probably that much. And literally just down there you don't want to put too much in because it is a warm day but you want to put enough in just to attract a fish that's coming through to get its head down and that's it a few small handfuls and over the top I'm going to put some free line corn and one thing I would say is there's two things to bear in mind here one is the amount of bait carp when it's warm like this are not going to sit there troughing they're going to come in pick a bit up and move off so you want enough there just a little trap that when they come in they pick up your bait on that first trip the other thing is put the bait close enough in like almost like there and just a yard past it because then you'll see the cloud or the fish moving in and then you get an idea of when they're near your bait and what you're looking out for is that line just going tight Going just over 12 pound, a stunning common. It didn't take too long, put a bit of bread out and he ignored it. So I'll just put a handful of that bait out and then a free lined bit of corn. Well, you saw the results on the GoPro. Let's get it straight back. So with that one in the net, it showed exactly what I wanted to happen. The carp come in and yeah, we hooked him on his first trip. So, they do make a lot of commotion as they go out the swim. So I'm just going to put in just a few more. Not loads. I'm just going to watch the water and look for the cat's behaviour. They do like coming along this inside line, so I'll see them if they come in. 
and worst case we put a little tiny bit of bait in and go for a mooch on another pool and just keep coming back and as long as they're mooching in this area every now and again you've got a chance we're waiting for the carp time to keep ourselves hydrated days like today having plenty of water with you i've got some more in the car and obviously sun cream are vital so what i've done there is now i've added the last tin of sweet corn to the mix with the juice and all what it does it just gives that mix you know that dampness in this heat keeping it covered all the time in in the eva middle bucket but yeah it's just a nice little grubbing mix you've got the cheshire particle lamp in there the little pellet and obviously the visual of the sweet corn and that is just about enough to attract one in and get a bite at the moment there's been one or two come back in but i'm yet to make another cast like i say i'm fishing that area there so i can see the boils and the ghosties when they come in i can just see them but what i'm waiting for is just to see one mooch in the beauty of fishing free line corn it makes a tiny plop on the water when you drop it in Before I went on my bit of an adventure, went for a wander over to the other pool. Dropped a little tiny bit of bait in, and what that does, it keeps that spot an area where they keep finding food. The hemp, obviously, makes sure that there is some food there all the time, and the corn and that. So when you come back, I could see there was one or two mooching. A handful of bait and you can drop back on and this is probably the smallest carp in the pool <laughs> but he didn't half go didn't he what he lacks in size he makes up for in beauty look at the lovely scale pattern on that and be a beautiful fish in years to come it's been enjoyable these two days like i say you know days on the river a waste of time at this time of year with it's so hot low and clear it's just about getting out getting a bend in the rod probably sunburnt along the way we're getting a bend in that rod and having fun is what fishing is all about right so i think what we'll do now is we'll just put a bit of bait in just enough just to top the area up a little bit not loads i say with this tactic you're not there to feed the carp you're there to attract and to catch and what we'll do i've left a bottle of water in the car which is over there we do risk obviously somebody coming on and fishing the spot, but hey, however it happens, it happens. We'll go into the car, get the bottle of water that's in the car, because I could do with a drink. Let's cover what I'm carrying with me on the bank. You've got to be mobile. There's no point doing this type of fishing if you're the type of angler who likes to sit in one swim, not move about, or you carry too much gear. You've got to carry stuff that you need, and that's it. So I've got the Corbin Transition Day Satchel or Day Rucksack in there. I've got enough compartments, you know, for everything I want to carry. You've got the main bit in the middle compartment. You can see there I've got the super light unhooking mat. So light you don't feel it on your back and it just clips on there. If I want to weigh a fish, I've got the quick weigh sling and obviously the scales. The bare minimum of tackle in a little small tackle box. Carry some bubble floats and some shot if I want to pin a bait down. And bread, like you've seen. And then, moving on, I've got the ground bait bowl. And like you said, we've seen the bait that's in there today. And there we go. There's it all packed away. So you've got the rucksack, a looking mat, landing net, selfie stick, and a rod. Just keep mooching around and looking for those opportunities.
Well, that didn't take too long after a bit of a mooch on Willow and nothing much was happening. You could see there, all the fish were in the swim nearly. The ghosties and everything. And that's why I love it. Two foot from the bank and all you need is a hook, sometimes a bit of shot if you want to pin it right down, but you don't need loads of tackle. Just need to be quiet and patient. You won't hear me too often on the vlog say, you know, I've been unlucky, but knowing what's in the lake, some of the proper carp were in then, you know, the ghosties and some of the, the VS fish that are in this pool were definitely in the swim. But in shallow swims like we're fishing, this just creeping over the 10 pound mark, you know, just that thrill of seeing them come in, the excitement builds. So they're definitely back in the swim. You can see the odd boil coming up. I don't think there's as many as last time. But you can see there are the waters moving. There's one or two about. Definitely, definitely in with another chance. So fingers crossed. Next time you see me, the rod's bent round. And we're playing one of these carp, as you can see there see it moving in and that's where the excitement builds because you know it's heading towards your bait and it seemed like an eternity I've lost count how many carp have come in and the line hasn't switched and then with the finger just on the line it bolted out the swim and there's been a couple of ghosties coming in and out and how they've not been hooked I don't know, they've been right on top of that corn, but almost certainly, in fact, yeah, <laughs> I recognise that tail, most definitely recognise that tail has been flapping in the swim for the past 10 minutes, but a free line bit of corn and he found the wrong piece, didn't he? Almost certainly going to be the last fish of the day. Can't think of a final way to end the vlog than a double and a guy that's been getting away with it for a few hours. I've seen a lot of that tail. But what a lovely way to end the vlog. I want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. I hope this vlog you've enjoyed and you know catching fish literally under the rod tip. Tight lines and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.